Cool. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm from Breeze. I'm the CEO there and one of the co-founders. And I want to tell you something about our environment. Okay, I have to jump. Um, cities today struggle uh, to adapt to the changing environment we have today. Um, if we look into China, we have situations like this where you can't really go outside anymore without real protection. But even in Europe, the topic is growing and growing, and we have more and more pollution in the world. How to adapt to this issue? We at Breeze provide companies and cities with smart environmental data solutions, with environmental sensors, and we help them to understand the environment around them and then to act upon this understanding and to mitigate and to adapt to those issues. We will become the one-stop shop for all environmental data solutions. And we can do this because we are already funded by the European Union. We got a direct seed invest from them. And we have the team to back this. I'm from consulting. I have three years of international consulting experience. One of my co-founders is 10 years in the smart home tech sector. And the other co-founder is a lead developer in an international IT consultancy. Our market is 1.3 trillion US dollars in 2019, growing from uh, 2014 with an average of 14% compound annual growth rate. And we've only launched in February this year, but we already acquired our first customers in June. So we only needed three, three and a half months to get from the initial idea to our first customers. Right now we have five paying customers and many more in the pipeline and also the first municipality in uh, the pipeline for us. So to sum up this issue, um, we provide cities and companies with environmental data solutions. We already have customers and we are now acquiring 500,000 euros investment from smart money, hopefully, to build our team. We need expertise in the sales sector, we need expertise in the design sector and also in sensor technology and for development in the further European market and also the Asian market during the next year. Thank you very much. We'll talk. What did you like about his presentation? The team. Design. Time. He was very calm and he made every word count. If you need to time yourself and your pace of, he made critical stops and you wait what he will say next. So you, that's a good start, not instead of running this. The only thing that, I, and it's good, how many times do you think he practiced? Not too much? Why not? No, no, but how many times he, he presented it to himself? Really? I think he did a lot because he was not looking at the slides. There's nothing he's looking at. He had two critical slides, especially three critical slides on the market and the team and the expansion, and he just stayed out of his mind. If he wasn't prepared enough, he would never have done that. So my comment is, add the slides. It's not, there's no limit on the slides. We try to tell you don't do more than 10 slides because we think you'll overrun your the time. But you have done the pitch without the slides. And if you had shown your pictures, your experience, while you're explaining the team slide, your market size, how it's growing, while you're explaining the market size, and your growth, it would have been much more easier for the audience to understand. One thing you mentioned, you got an investment, 70,000 euros. Is it an investment or a grant? Okay, don't say investment, because if it's an investment, I go like, European Union has FP7, does not invest, it gives grants. And investors will look like, okay, what's this? So we are already pre-seed granted, we proved the concept, we are paying customers, we established the company, we're trying to raise half a million to expand. It's much easier. Any comments from the audience?
No, I'll just briefly allow you to see it. Okay, uh, well done. I have a lot of questions about this one, but mostly because I, I find it extremely interesting. But the problem is, is that I'm, I'm stupid when it comes to this sort of thing. I'm completely ignorant, and most people in your audience will be. So when you talk about the environment and measuring uh, and analytics, I don't really know what you're talking. Are you talking about like uh, dirty air or uh, you know the quality of water? I'd be interested in knowing more specifics about that and how analytics work in that environment. Uh, because you talk about actionable analytics, but I imagine to act on environmental data is very slow because you're working with big companies and you're working with governments. And so, uh, how how do people eventually? Uh, act on the analytics that you deliver them, and what are the market pressures? Like, uh, you know, is it is it the environment of legislation in the in in the world right now? But how is the market pressuring the potential future adoption of environmental measuring tools? Uh, and then the only other thing I would mention is that uh, I think for a lot of investors, hardware is extremely scary. Uh, and I saw that you're involved in sensors. And my immediately thought, my, my first thought was that 500K is quite low for hardware development. And so uh, I think there are a lot of investors that won't even consider uh, investing in hardware companies. And so you may want to flesh that out just very briefly in your presentation um, to, to give investors an idea of whether or not it's something they want to get involved in. Yes, thank you. It's already in our new pitch deck. We got the same feedback from investors in Munich last week. Great. And um, to your other question, um, we only did the sensor because there's nothing on the market right now that can fulfill our needs. Mm -hmm. But our analytics part looks like this. The data gets streamed to us. We calculate what you can actually do about it. And if you are in an office, for instance, the first thing is you can open the window. But because it's such a tiny con uh, constrained space, you can also use existing solutions mm -hmm. like air purifiers, like humidifiers, and so on to adapt the air quality to your needs. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Alant. Uh, it was a uh, very to the point presentation, but I'm going to give a feedback which is, I think, important for other startups as well. Please don't assume your audience is going to hear every single word you say. How good you, you talk is not important. For one second of your presentation, I thought about a very stupid personal thing about myself. And you, at that point, you named the customers. And then I said, oh, I miss the customers. Who, who is these customers? Who is these customers? I couldn't find it on your slides. And I couldn't understand if you are selling it to the city, to the, to the consumer, to whom. So put your key uh, information on the slide. Again, in a brief way, maybe just a picture, maybe just a logo, just put them there. Yes, thank you for the feedback. We thought we can only hand in five slides, but we have another pitch deck ready. We can just deliver in a few minutes. Two and a half minutes. You can have 25 slides and just run through them, and nobody will understand anything. It's not about the number of slides. You can have three pictures, five pictures. You go in a second, gives a message. You can use it. Just stick on two and a half minutes. Good job.